Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and I'm back after my little break. Side note, I no longer have an upload schedule anymore, I'll just upload whenever. But, I will keep you posted on my Twitter. Anyways, I was shocked when Horton Hears a Who trumped all of my polls. People want a theory on this movie over a theory on Night at the Museum and The Last Mimsy. Don't worry, I'll get to those another day, but for now, we enter the strange land of Dr. Seuss. If you didn't know, Horton Hears a Who is about an elephant who hears a noise coming from a floating speck of dust. He learns that a whole entire community lives on this speck of dust known as Whoville, and it is home to an entire race of tiny creatures known as Whos. And I'm pretty sure that How the Grinch Stole Christmas also takes place on a speck, since it also takes place in Whoville. And, and for that matter, maybe even all Dr. Seuss stories take place on other specks. I mean, there are other specks shown in this film, you know. Maybe each speck is for a different tale? I, I don't know, but this isn't my theory for today. No, the theory I've just come up with is what I'm calling the Conspiracy of the Who Council. You know these leaders of the town? I may have reason to believe that they knew they lived on a speck, before Horton and all that. Hear me out. If the council knew such a terrifying fact, they would immediately jump to conceal it. We know this because not only is it the kind of thing all governments would jump to do, but if we closely examine their actions, reactions, and what their strange expectations are, we can see just how likely they are to conceal such a thing. First, they are extremely adamant and stubborn about keeping the Who Centennial going, and even when things look very, very bleak, they try their hardest to distract the community. When the mayor says it would be best to postpone the centennial, the council chairman gets livid, but not in any rational or expected way. They get angered because apparently they have had 100 years of perfection, and they will not end it here. Now, they have no reason to act in the ways that they do, unless they are attempting to conceal something. The chairman's tone sounds less like he is mad about breaking perfection, and more like he's mad about the mayor opening up about something. Nothing ever goes wrong in Whoville. Never has, and never will, you blathering boob. When Mayor McDodd talks about an elephant in the sky, the chairman laughs it off to an irrational extent. In multiple occurrences, the chairman's voice gets shaky and he loses his words. Then, the city begins to experience the strange phenomenon and he tries averting their attention, constantly. When they finally give in to listening about Horton, the chairman instantly changes mood, but he isn't shocked like the rest of the city. His mood is surprisingly neutral. I always thought that it was a bit odd the way he reacts. When the mayor discusses the strange weather, these two exchange a nervous glance of mutual understanding. But even though the animators have complete control over every facial expression, you may not believe me, still. Luckily, I have way more than just this. Yes, I have some pretty solid evidence when it comes to the physical aspects of the city. Look at the observatory. These buildings are used to study space and the sky, but it's such an odd place to include in a story about people that have no space. It's just a weird detail that sort of goes against the plot, because all their sky is, is just a weird nesting fabric thingy. So what would the observers find? Well, they would see the nesting fabric, or possibly, if they are technical enough, the outer regions of where the speck is, a whole other larger town. And we see that they have long since shut down the observatory. Why shut it down? Such another odd detail. Well, I think I know why. Shutting it down proves that they knew that they were on a speck, and that this information was dangerous. Observing the stars is futile if they are on a speck. If this word got out, there would be mass chaos, mass panic, and thus a break in their 100 years of perfection. And the only person in Whoville who ever enters the abandoned observatory anymore is Jojo, the mayor's son. Why? Well, it is revealed that he is building a machine to produce obscenely loud music. And for what purpose? Well, he enters the observatory when it's abandoned. This would allow him to figure things out a closed observatory, a strange sky, the smart boy would figure it out immediately. Knowing exactly what's going on, he stays there to make a massive sound creator that would eventually be enough to burst the sky fabric open. All of this evidence sort of clicks into place like a solved Rubik's Cube. When the city eventually learns the truth, Jojo is prepared. He knows just what to do, and right when to do it. He even knows the optimum position and what to use to break the barrier. When the mayor begins talking about Horton, 
the voice in the sky. His wife looked disappointed and embarrassed. The council laughed, causing the city to laugh. The only person, the only person, with a very slightly noticeable but completely different expression was Jojo, showing a terrified look, knowing that nobody believed his dad, except him. And of course, the council, but we've already crossed that bridge. And even after all of this, I still felt like it wasn't fitting entirely. I still didn't believe that this star study tower was used to inspect the outer reaches of the speck, and I didn't know why I didn't feel like it fit. Well, what if I told you that there was blatantly definitive proof that the scientists working here would have seen Horton's world and by extension, the council expectedly keeping quiet? Well, I watched the original Dr. Seuss special and it confirmed a bunch of my suspicions. You see, originally, in the book and special, there was no mayor, just a scientist who studied the sky and who wanted to prove that they lived on a speck. When making the film adaptation, this person was split up into Dr. Mary Lou LaRue and Mayor McDodd. But in the original, this scientist worked, ready? In the observatory. It was his. He worked there, and he was looking out through the speck. So we know that they can get through the barrier, and therefore, we have even more reason to believe that the scientists that worked there in the adaptation knew. Because what a strange building not only to include in a concealed city, but to keep included from the special and the book. This thing is used to study the sky. It is intentionally included by the filmmakers, despite them knowing that there is no space in this world to study. It is also intentionally abandoned in the film. This is too odd. The intentional carelessness of the council. The bizarre looks and actions of the chairman. An abandoned space lab. A petrified sun. A planned machine. Direct inspiration from the special and the proof of the special. The Who Council conspiracy. Still, it's only a theory, but we do know that the people remaking Seuss movies already have tons of secrets. <coughs> Lorax. <coughs> and so, until next time, I'm the Theorizer. Why not check out my second channel by clicking here? I post top tens, update videos, and behind the scenes. Also, for the past few weeks, I've been working on a big project full of secrets to crack. Click here for that channel. Bye.